Behold the Real Jesus Broadcast, brought to you by the Jesus Only Broadcasting Network, located at www.jobn.tv, where you can go and see and hear the preaching of the Apostles' Doctrine of Christ, the Jesus Only Doctrine. We have received many questions concerning Jesus Christ. How is he one? When we have the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, El Shaddai, all the different Jehovah titles. How can God be one when there's many different offices or functions? So we will be dealing with that in this broadcast this week about how Jesus is one. Holy One is mentioned 53 times in the Word of God, where the Trinity is only mentioned one time in the Word of God and not very good at that as Revelation 16, 13 talks about three unclean spirits like frogs. Now, there's been many cunningly devised fables denying the only Lord God. Now, we know there's one body, one Lord, one faith, at one spirit. How is that one spirit going to do all of the various offices to work salvation in and of himself to bring mankind back to him? As we get into the broadcast, we'll answer some of these questions. In 1 John 2, we're going to see there's three stages of growth in the body of Christ. Now, the newborn babes, the babies, there desire the sincere miracle of the word that they may grow thereby. Well, here we're going to start off John talking in his epistle, 1 John 2. I write to you little children. <clears throat> Why? Because your sins are forgiven for his name's sake. How did you get there? You didn't ask Jesus to come into your heart, and you didn't say the sinner's prayer. That's repentance, but that's not born of the water and the Spirit. The light that is now shining since that day of Pentecost, with Peter having the keys to the kingdom, gave us the, those keys. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for his name's sake. For the remission of your sins, that's born of the water. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, born of the Spirit. Now your sins are forgiven for his namesake. You're not full grown, you're little children. There's another requisite for little children. I write unto you little children because you have known the Father. Known the Father? Yes. In John 8, 13, they came to Jesus and they said, uh, Jesus, you bear record of yourself. Your record's not true. Jesus said, though I bear record of myself, my record is true because I'm not alone. I am my Father that sent me. He's with me. It's written in your law, the testimony of two men is true. I'm one that bear witness of myself, as Jesus there in the days of his flesh, and my Father that sent me, he beareth witness of me. They asked Jesus, where is your father? He said, uh, if you'd have known me, you'd have known my father. The little children know the father. They've known the father. They've had that revelation that Jesus is the father. He is that spirit. There's one body, one spirit. Now, there's many different offices of that spirit. There's a father. That's the administrative office of the spirit because he is a creator and the Father of all spirits, because he created them. There's the Word. That's the expression office of that same spirit, not a different spirit. It didn't say Word being Son. The Word is a separate office in itself. The Word is Spirit. The Word is life. That Word is the expression office of the Spirit of God. Revealing his thought, plan, purpose, and will. The Holy Ghost is the power office of that same Spirit. And you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me on Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the most parts of the world. Now, those are three different offices. They have the Spirit. Now, what's the office of redemption? Of the same Spirit. It's the Son of God. These children have known that the Son of God, the office of the Son of God, is that invisible Father, the invisible Spirit, revealed, manifest. 
And as we get into the broadcast, broadcast today, we'll see. We also see in Revelation 1, in this revelation of Jesus Christ, that he gave unto John to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass, sent and signified by, it by his angel unto John. Revelation 1, 8, he says he's Alpha and Omega. That is the Aloth Tov in Hebrew, the A to Z in English, and in Greek, the Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end, saith the Lord. That Lord, the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Jesus is that spirit. He says it again. Uh, he was, uh, now the thing is, how can he be the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and uh, say, I'm he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I'm alive forevermore, and have the keys to uh, hell and death. Well, how can he be that spirit and die, because the spirit can't die? Now we're going to get into the various offices and functions of that one spirit, how God works salvation in and of himself alone. We're going to find in uh, Revelation 19 that he is that word. He is the word. We see it in Revelation 19. Uh, he's coming there. Uh, the armies in heaven are following him. Jesus' eyes is a flame of fire. His head were many crowns, a royal diadema, a name written that no man knew but he himself. That is he that is and was from the beginning. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. His name is called, watch that, the Word of God. Not the Word of God made flesh. The Word of God. Not flesh. The Word of God. Now we know that the Word, in the beginning was the Word, the Word with God, and the Word was God. The same as in beginning with God. All things were made by Him. And here, the Word was made flesh, dwelt among us, tabernacled among us. We beheld His glory, the glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Watch in John 1.18. No man has seen God at any time. The Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost is invisible. The only begotten Son, the only begotten One, the monogamous Theos, the only begotten God, which is in the bosom of the Father, He hath declared Him. That's a mystery of godliness. 1 Timothy 3.16. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. Not the Son of God. God himself was manifest in the flesh. That is the monogamous huos or monogamous theos. The only begotten Son or the only begotten God. As we find in Isaiah 43.10. That saith the Lord that you are my witnesses. Thus saith the Lord. That's capital L, capital O capital R, capital D, and my servant whom I have chosen. Well, that sounds like too. That you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. I am that servant. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall be after me. See now that I, even I, am he. Beside me there is no other God. I'm the Lord, thy Redeemer, God, thy Savior. Isaiah 43, 10 through 14. Here we're going to see Jesus uh, he said, watch how he says this. There's going to be a difference in the days of his flesh, the word made flesh, and then literally coming back to his former glory, being the word. Revelation 19, 13, on his vesture dipped in blood, his name is called the word of God. Well, the word is spirit, the word is life. Now, though, in, in John 1, 14, we saw the word was made flesh. Well, Notice that Jesus said in the days of his flesh, he's working salvation as one of us. And that is the key to understanding how God works salvation in and of himself. Literally, in a humiliation, humbling himself, taking on the form of a servant made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man humbled himself to the death, the death of the cross. Who was it? God manifest in flesh. That is a whole mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. Now, but there's many questions that need to be answered. And as we delve into it, John 14.17, he said, 14.16, I'll pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, that sounds like there's going to be another one. 
He says it, another comforter. Well, when Jesus is in his humiliation, working as a man of Adam, just like you and just like me. Hebrews 2 says, For as much then as the children are protectors of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Then all things he was made like unto his brethren. Hebrews 4, 15, Tenth in all points like as we are, yet without sin. Well, here he's in that days of his flesh, and there's going to be a differentiation because he has come under his own law by humbling himself, taking on the form of a servant. He was in the form of God, being in the form of God, not enough robber to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. When he did that, he humbled himself. The Spirit of God, God himself, the Father of glory, humbled himself and took upon him the form of a servant. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Well, take a look here. Jesus is speaking from his humiliation. He is now in under the law. In the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. How? Galatians 4, verse 4. Made of a woman, made in under the law. Well, he said, now I'll pray the Father, he'll give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Now, let's keep watching it here. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. Now, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says that he is that spirit of truth in John 14. He said up here, I am the way. I am that truth. Watch it. Even the spirit of truth who the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you. Now I'm with you. I'm one of you. I'm under the law, just like you. I'm going to be tenth in all points, just like you. I'm glorifying my own human back to myself, for God was in Christ, reconciling the world back into himself. And by doing that, he has manifesting his love to us. 1 John 3, 16, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us. Now this is the exciting revelation that's going all over the world right now, in nations, and they're overjoyed in receiving this great revelation of how God is one. It's time, and always has been, the truth, but now God is revealing it stronger than ever in the last days. It's going forth now. The nations are receiving it. Pastors and ministers, apostles, prophets are coming in to this great revelation. Don't miss out, neighbor. He said, I... Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. Watch what he says. I will come to you. Well, wait a minute. I thought you said that other comforter was coming to you. No, at that time, he's speaking here in his humiliation, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwells with you. I'm one of you right now. But don't worry about it. Don't take your thought, because then after my glorification, the Holy Ghost is going to be, going to be given. Because out of your belly is going to flow rivers of living waters. This he spake of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given. Well, Jesus speaking up here, Holy Ghost hadn't been given yet. But after Jesus is glorified, the Holy Ghost will be given. And out of our belly shall flow rivers of living waters. This Jesus spake of the Holy Ghost, which was not yet given, because he was not yet glorified. When he's glorified, now he speaks to him in his glory. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. As we see here that he is that Holy One. He's working salvation in and of himself by humbling himself to becoming one of us. We find it in 1 John 1, that which was from the beginning. That word which we have heard, we've seen it with our eyes. Well, for the word to be seen, it's an invisible spirit of God. It had to be manifest. God was manifest in the flesh. 1 Timothy 3.16. That's a mystery. But that mystery is being, being revealed all over the world right now. Not that there's three different persons. Not that there's two different persons, but only one person of God who is spirit, that invisible spirit that manifests in a body of flesh for our salvation. He said, John said, we've seen with our eyes. We've looked upon that word, and our hands have handled the word of life. Notice that word. It's capitalized. It's deity. It is that spirit. How can that be? Because he is that life. It's just as the son of man. In John 3, 13, no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, 
even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. The Son of Man's in heaven? How can that be? Because he is that spirit, always has been that spirit, and always will be that spirit. Now we're getting into that revelation of Christ, which is so exciting all over the world, they're receiving it right now. Been in doctrine of Trinity for years, some of them 40, 50, 60 years, and having five, six, seven, ten, some one man, even 23 churches. They're seeing this great truth and saying, oh, now it all fits together in that revelation of Jesus. And neighbor, that's what's happening right now. Take a look. The salvation, 1 Peter 1.10, of which salvation of prophets, those Old Testament prophets, that's Samuel, Isaiah, uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel 14, minor prophets, all the way to Malachi. They searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Searching what or what manner of time. Now be sure and catch this. That spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. Christ is that spirit. Spirit of Christ. Christ is that spirit. Always has been that spirit and always will be that spirit. But he's going to work as a servant. He's going to work salvation in and of himself. Coming in a form of a servant. Made in the likeness of men. Then he's going to go back to his former glory, being glorified with the Father's own self. That's the reason Jesus said before Pilate, what and if you shall see the Son of Man ascend back up to where he was before? Well, take a look here. That searching what or what manner of time, the Spirit of Christ. Christ is that Spirit. Now let's see. That Spirit is the Father. How many spirits are there? One spirit. That word, the word is spirit, the word is life. The Holy Ghost is that holy spirit of God, which is one. Different functions. The Father is the Father of all spirits. He created them all. The Word is the expression office, thought, plan, purpose, and will of God. The Holy Spirit is the power office, the Holy Ghost, the power office of God. Same spirit, not a different spirit. Same spirit. And this is where it gets very, very interesting. Because God so loved you that he took on a body of flesh himself and literally laid down his life for you. 1 John 3.16. Take a look here. That Spirit of Christ, which is the Father, Word, and the Holy Ghost. That Christ, which is born in the city of David, Christ the Lord, the Lord Jehovah God Almighty, which was in them did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of who? The sufferings of Christ. Now that Christ, that spirit, is going to take on a body of flesh and blood. This won't be Christ Jr., but it will be Christ. For this Christ is uh, this spirit, this spirit, the, the spirit of Christ right here, manifest in a body of flesh and blood. So we're going to have the spirit of Christ manifest Christ, which is that spirit, revealed in a body of flesh and blood as the Christ, God manifest in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3, 16. Now we're getting into that revelation. You have an unction from that Holy One, not the Holy Trinity. You have an unction from the Holy One. You know all things. I'm not written you because you're not the truth, because you know it, and uh, no lies of the truth. Take a look at 1 John 2, 22. Who is a liar but he that knoweth that Jesus is the Christ? Well, what's that Christ? Christ is that spirit that manifests, that invisible spirit, Christ, that invisible spirit that manifests in a body of flesh and blood as the Son of God, which is the Father revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Son of God, you've seen the Son of God. He said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. John 10, 30, I and my Father are one. Who is a liar, but he that knoweth that Jesus is the Christ, that he is that spirit. Now Christ is in you. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Oh, my goodness, why? Because the Son is the Father revealed, that invisible spirit, the Father, which is invisible, revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Not a different spirit for the Father and the Son or one and the self-same spirit. The only difference is the Father is that spirit. The Son is the spirit revealed, manifest in a body of flesh and blood. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. Why? Because the Father is revealed in the Son. 
The Son is a manifestation in bodily form as a human being in flesh. Spirit revealed in flesh. So if you deny the Son, you say you, the same has not the Father. Because son, the Son is the Father revealed in a body of flesh. But he that enlarges the Son hath the Father also. Take a look. If you continue in the Son and in the Father, Galatians 4, verse 6, that God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son. What He sent? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. Well, what is that? That's the Spirit of the Son, which we call Abba Father. Galatians 4, 6. God has sent forth the Spirit of His Son into our hearts, whereby we cry, Abba Father. As we get into this word, we see more and more, whosoever transgresses and abideth not in this doctrine of Christ hath not God. Very serious. Can't just believe on Jesus any old way. It has to be the true Jesus. And that's what is being received all over the world. We are very excited. Ministers are excited all over the world saying, Oh, the mystery is now revealed. We're seeing it. All that, that uh, mystery, all that dark water is now cleared up. And now we see it crystal clear. Jesus only mentioned uh, 53 times in the Word of God. Trinity not mentioned one time. And there's a reason for that. How is God one? Who is Jesus? How can the Father, Word, the Holy Ghost, the Son of God, Son of Man, all be one? When Jesus said, I and my Father are one, heist, the Greek word heist, meaning one in the self-same spirit. As we get into the broadcast today, we'll talk about how God is one. Many different offices, many different functions. It's like John Doe. John Doe Enterprises. But John Doe has three separate businesses. He has an air conditioning business. But John Doe also has a flooring business. And then John Doe also has a roofing business. Air conditioning, flooring, and roofing. And we walk into John Doe Enterprises, into the air conditioning office, and say, I would like to buy a roof. Well, they'd say, well, I'm sorry, you're in the wrong office. We'd say, well, isn't this John Doe Enterprises? Well, yes, it is. But you're in the wrong office. One spirit, but Jesus has many office, offices. And uh, the name of every office is Jesus. Jesus is all. That is the name that is above all. The name of the Father. The name of the Word, the name of the Holy Ghost, the name of the Son of God, the name of the Son of Man is Jesus. How is He one when we know He prayed to the Father? And that Holy Ghost came down in the form of a dove and abode upon Jesus. Why did that voice come from heaven? When we have and know that the Son of Man, in John 3.13, Jesus states that uh, no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Is Jesus doing ventriloquism? Is he speaking himself and reverberating his voice? Of course not. That is what we need to know in the revelation of Jesus Christ. Not a ventriloquist, he is. Uh, the very office is working at the self-same time and that spirit. That spirit manifests in the body of flesh and blood. Basically, the Father, Word, the Holy Ghost is the spirit which is invisible. The Son of God is that spirit, Father, Word, or Holy Ghost, manifest, seen, handled in the days of his flesh in a body of flesh and blood. It's God manifest. And that is a great mystery that is now being received all over the world, with great joy and anticipation of the ministers all throughout Africa, India, Nepal, Pakistan, are all saying they've never seen it like that before. It's the truth, always has been, but what a great revelation that we are turning to that Jesus, that faith that was once delivered to the saints. That same faith that we're going to right now in this broadcast as we bring this word all literally to all nations very excited. We want to make sure that we're in on this revelation, the revelation of Jesus Christ. In 1 John 2, in his epistle, he said, I write to you little children because your sins are forgiven for his namesake. What name? Jesus. 
How did you get your sins forgiven? You didn't say the sinner's prayer. You didn't ask Jesus to come into your heart. You were born in the water and the Spirit. According to John 3, Peter, having the keys to the kingdom, said, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins. Born of the water. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, born of the Spirit. For the promise unto you and your children and men to fall off, even to as many as the Lord our God shall call. Well, that's children. Another requisite for being children, I write to you little children, because you have known the Father. Jesus is that Father. He is that Spirit. Let's see how He is that Spirit. Jesus, who being in the form of God, that form is Morpha, nature, Spirit. Jesus, in the form of God, thought it not proper to be equal with God. Notice that Jesus, as the Son of God, said, My Father is greater than I. The things concerning me have an end. Well, Jesus, who being in the form of God, that's the Spirit He is, always has been, before He came into the world manifest in a body of flesh and blood as the Son of God, the Father revealed in a body of flesh and blood. He found it not robbery to be equal, not made equal, to be equal with God. The Word's equal with God. Love, all the literal attributes of God are equal. There's no attribute above another in God. All these attributes, just like wisdom. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. He uses a singular personal pronoun. I, wisdom, dwell with prudence. I daily was his delight. Well, that's not two persons. It is an attribute of God in Proverbs 8. Jesus has many attributes. It's by three attributes. Jeremiah 51, uh, uh, 15, by his wisdom, power, and understanding, he created the heavens and the earth. Three different attributes, same one spirit. How did God get here? He made himself of no reputation. That literally means uh, that he came down from heaven and humbled himself. In this form of God that he is a spirit, he took upon him another form, the form of a servant made in the likeness of men. God manifest in the flesh. That is the Son of God. Not God the Son, the Son of God, which is the Father revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Very simple. The Father is the invisible Spirit. The Father is the Father. The Spirit of God. The Word is the Word. It's the expression office of the Spirit of God. It's thy word is spirit, thy word is life. The Holy Ghost is the power office of that Spirit of God. When it's manifest in flesh, it's the Son of God. God manifests in flesh. The Father reveal, I and my Father are one. You've seen me, you've seen the Father. Why? Because the Father that dwelled in him, he's the one doing the, the works. He's the one healing the sick, cleansing the leper, raising the dead, casting out devils. Opening blind eyes, loose the dumb tongue, lame walk, Catholic going free. Jesus made himself of some reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, and was made in the likeness of man. And God himself was found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him. Somebody said, see, there's two. No, same one. Jesus said, destroy this temple in three days. I will raise it up because I am that spirit. He is that spirit. Jesus is that spirit. And given him a name which is above every name. How did he get that name? By an inheritance. He obtained it. That the name of Jesus every knee should bow. Things in heaven, things in earth, things under the earth. And every tongue can confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. That Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. No man speaking by the spirit calleth Jesus a curse. A curse. But no man can call Jesus Lord except by the Holy Ghost. What glory did he go to? The glory of God the Father. He was glorified with the Father's own self. In his humiliation, he became a man just like you and just like me to redeem us that were under the law. When he went back, he went back glorified with the glory of the Father. The glory he put off to become a man, that same glory he took back. John 17, 5, 5 Father, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the world was. Glorify me with thine own self. That is the glory of the Father. We see here, the Word was made flesh. That is the Son of God. No man has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is the monogamous zuos, or the monogamous theos, the only begotten God, the only begotten One, 
which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. We find that in Isaiah 43, 10. Thus saith the Lord, this is to, the, to his, thus saith the Lord, and my servant, whom I have chosen, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he, that God is that man. Before me there was no God formed, neither shall be after me. See, now that I, even I am he, I am God thy Savior, the Lord, thy Redeemer. That's Isaiah 43, 10 through 14. Here we have that revelation. Now, Jesus is saying that he's going to pray the Father. While he's in the days of his flesh, he's working salvation as one of us. And this is what we have to understand. By one man's disobedience, sin came to the world, and death by sin. Therefore, in Adam, all man die. By one man's disobedience, sin came to the world, and death by sin. Therefore, by one man shall my servant make many righteous. God, we can call him Father. We can call him Word. We can call him Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, uh, Jehovah, Elohim, El Shaddai, is all spirit which is invisible. For him to work salvation, he can't die. He can't be tempted. There was a law. God gave a law that sin might appear exceedingly sinful. For our sin is not appeared, where there is no law. Therefore, God, in the fullness of time, God sent forth his son. What was that? The word this word that was made flesh and called the Son of God. The of God is this flesh and blood manifestation. The Son and the Father are one and the self same spirit. The Son of God is the Father revealed in the body of flesh and blood. You've seen me, you've seen the Father, John 14. John 8, 24, except you believe that I am he, the Father, you shall die in your sins. But why and how did that voice come from heaven? Then cometh the end when he shall live with the kingdom of God, even the Father, that he may be all through all and in us all. And that's what we want to get to. There Jesus is going to come take his, his ministry at age 30 as one of us. God sent forth his son in the fullness of time, Galatians 4, verse 4, made of a woman made in under the law, and under this law to redeem us that were under the law. He's going to keep this law as a man, tempted at all points like as we are, yet without sin, Hebrews 4, 15. As he does... And fulfill that law, then he's going to take the ordinances of this law and nail it to his cross and thereby break down this middle wall of partition, thereby the twain, that is the Spirit of God and man, make one new man. That man is the quickening spirit now glorified with the Father's own self, Christ in you. So God has sent forth the Spirit of his Son into our hearts whereby we cry, Have a Father. For the Holy Ghost is the Spirit of the Father, Spirit of the Son. It's one of the self same Spirit. There's only one Spirit of God. One body, one Spirit. When we get that, now we're getting that revelation of uh, Christ. This is what Jesus said in the days of his flesh. He's one of us, so he has to pray to the Father as he's showing us the way, the truth, and the life as a man. Therefore, Jesus said, I'm going to pray the Father. He's got to pray the Father. He's one of us. And he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Who is that? That's the spirit of truth. Well, Jesus said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is that spirit of truth. He told us up there he was in John 14. Now he said, in the spirit of the truth, and the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwelleth with you. I'm walking with you. I'm, I'm being tempted at all points just like you are. But I shall be in you. Watch what he says. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. For well, in his glorification, he is that spirit. He is going back to his former glory. Just because he took on a body of flesh and blood to redeem us. That's where Jesus said in Revelation 3, 21, He that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I overcame and sat down with my Father in his throne. So Jesus prepared a place for us in heaven as this suffering Christ. And he sat there, born 20 seats in heaven, which is the priesthood. We're kings and priests to the Lord our God. Four beasts and four and twenty elders in heaven. That is, uh, seats that he put there where we sit. So him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne. I've prepared that place for you. And where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go, you know, and the way you know. Now, watch this. Revelation 3.21, Jesus said, Even as I overcame, and I am set. 
Why? I am set, S-E-T, down with my Father in, not beside it, in that throne. Why? Because all power in heaven and earth is given unto him. So therefore, Christ, as a man in his humiliation, in the form of a servant, wrought salvation for us that we could have a place in heavenly places and see his glory, not our glory, his glory. That is the four and twenty seats in heaven of the four and twenty elders. Ephesians 1, what he wrought to usward, the church, when he set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And then Jesus said, even as I overcame, where did you go, Jesus? Even as I overcame, I am set a state of glory down with my Father in that throne. He is that Spirit, and the Lord is that Spirit, and there's only one Lord. And the Lord is that spirit. Somebody said, well, it sounds like there's two lords. Well, now this is where we get into, we've got to know who that Lord is. Many questions are, are being asked, and we want to answer those questions. If you have questions, give us a call or write us. Uh, visit our website, send us a question. We'll get right back to you. I'll try to answer it on the air. 1 Corinthians 15, 24. Now, in Adam all die, in Christ all should be made alive, every man in his own order. In his own provision, in his own his little battalion, in his own battle group. Christ the first fruits. Afterward, they are Christ at his coming. The first fruits is the first begotten from the dead, who created all things, whether it be thrones, principalities, powers, things visible and invisible, all things were created by him. That's Jesus Christ, Colossians 1, 16 and 17. Then cometh the end. Jesus said, the things concerning me have an end. In the days of his flesh... When he has wrought salvation in and of himself alone, then he said he was glorified with the Father's own self. Then now we are in Christ's stead. You are the body of the Christ. You're ambassadors for Christ. He has given you, the church of the living God, uh, as ambassadors and are in Christ's stead, giving you the ministry of reconciliation. Then comes the end when he shall deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father. Why? Because he's bringing many sons and daughters unto glory. That's his whole purpose. Then cometh the end. That is, the end of that day, when he'll deliver up the kingdom to God, even the Father. Why? When he shall have put all down, all rule and authority and power. Now, this is exactly what Jesus said in Matthew twenty-two forty-two. 42. Take care. He said, he must reign until he hath put all enemies under his feet. In the revelation of the Son of Man, Jesus is the head, and you are individual members of the body of Christ, making one, one. One man called the Son of Man, Jesus the head, and you the body of the Christ, and you are the feet generation uh, there that fills heaven and earth. Jesus in you, Christ in you, uh, the hope of glory. We have not so learned Christ if we do not understand Christ in us, Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's a mystery of the kingdom. I don't care what the kingdom of this world is. They're going to go, if the dog back to his vomit, is going to stay in there. The kingdom of man will always be corrupt and always lead to a bitter end. Vanity and vexation of spirit, but not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, the great is that mystery, that mystery of the kingdom, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. He, he did this for our sake. He's always been God, but he wanted to bring many sons of glory. Take a look at Matthew twenty-two forty-two. 42. When the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked him, What think you of Christ? Now, we need to know this revelation of Christ. Christ is the foundation rock of the church. Whose son is he? Notice that's a little S-O-N. It's a sonship question, according to the flesh. They said the son of David. Well, he is the son of David, according to the flesh, Revelation, I mean, Romans 1, 3. But take a look. Jesus said to them, How then does David in spirit call him Lord? Now that Lord is Adon. That's the, the man who is God, who has the Spirit of God revealed in fullness in him. All the fullness of the Godhead. He is God manifest. How does David in spirit call him Lord? Saying the Lord, see that capital L-O-R-D? That's Jehovah Lord God Almighty. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D is the invisible spirit. Can't see it. It's his visible spirit. Said unto my Lord. What is that, my Lord? It's the Lord revealed in a body of flesh and blood in 
that Lord, L capital L called O R O R D is the invisible spirit, revealed in a body of flesh and blood as the Lord, which is Adon, the man who is God, who has the fullness of the spirit, who will raise his own body up, who is God manifest in the flesh. The Lord said unto my Lord. Well, they'll tell you there's two lords. Ephesians 4 said there is one body, one spirit, one Lord. And you have to have that revelation. You and I have to have that revelation, dear neighbor, of how Jesus is that Lord. And that's what Jesus is driving this point here in Matthew 22, 42. He says, how then, how does David in spirit call him Lord? Said, the Lord said unto my Lord. Sounds like two, set thou on my right hand. That right hand always in Greek is dexios. It is a figurative place of power and glory. It is not chire, a physical place with a longitude and latitude. It's dexios. At my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. If David called him Lord, how is he then just a man? How is he just a, his son? How is he just a man if David called him Lord? God manifest in flesh. He quoted Psalm 110, verse 1. The Lord said unto my Lord, Set thou at my right hand, set there until I make thine enemies thy footstool. Now it says here, how does this work? The Lord said unto my Lord. That Lord there is the manifestation in flesh who is Adon. If it was just a man only and not, it would be Adonai. That means Lord or husband or master. But that's not what he said. He said if he's just, if, if, he, is, if he calls him Lord, if David calls him Lord, that is the Spirit of God, the Lord of glory, manifest in his flesh. Then how does David call him Lord if he's just his son, Adonai? Because they didn't understand that the Lord, Jehovah God Almighty, Jesus Christ, is the Lord revealed in this body of flesh and blood. Now, we're getting somewhere in the revelation of Christ. We must know the doctrine of Christ. If any man abide not in the doctrine of Christ, he hath not God. Take a look here as we explore this foundation rock, which is Christ. 1 Peter 1, verse 11. Or verse 10, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel 14, minor prophets all the way to my craft prophesied. Searching what or what manner of time, notice, the Spirit of Christ. Christ is that Spirit. The Lord is that Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. That spirit which was in those Old Testament prophets when it did signify, when it testified beforehand of the sufferings of who? Of Christ. Christ, its spirit, will be manifest in a body of flesh and blood as a man which will be Christ revealed. Christ manifest. The Word made flesh. And to whom is revealed, and to himself, and to us, to administer the things which are now reported unto you by them that preach the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. What is that Holy Ghost? It's Christ in you, the hope of glory. That's the mystery of the kingdom, the mystery of the kingdom of God. If we take a good look at that, and uh, that revelation, 1 John, the second chapter, we're going to find it mentions you have an unction from the Holy One, not a Holy Trinity. The Holy Trinity is not mentioned one time in the Word of God. Trinity is mentioned in the Word of God one time in Revelation 16, 13, but it's not holy. There's three unclean spirits like frogs. They have taken and made cunningly devised fables denying the only Lord God, the Holy One. Well, you have an unction from the Holy One. Jesus is one, one spirit, one body, one spirit, one Lord, one faith. And you know all things. I have not written to you because you know not the truth, because you know it and know lies of the truth. What is that? Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? We're going to find in 1 John 5, 1, 
whosoever is born of God, whosoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, that is that spirit, that invisible spirit made manifest as the Christ, the Lord, the Lord Ad Adon, the man who has the spirit of God revealed, God manifest in the flesh, 1 Timothy 3.16, that is the true God. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? 1 John 5, verse 1. He that believeth that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. The faith is built upon that rock, which is Christ, the Son of the living God. Matthew 16. The Son of the living God is the Father revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Notice it says he is antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Somebody said, no, I did not deny the Father. I'm acknowledging the Son and the Father separate. No, the Son and the Father are one. They are the Holy One. For the Father is the invisible Spirit. The Son is that Spirit revealed. Jesus said, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. The words that I speak are not mine. The Father that dwelleth in me, who dwells in me, houses permanently in me. He's the one doing the works. He's the one healing the sick, cleansing the leper, raising the dead, casting out devils, open blind eyes, loose the dumb tongue, lame walk, and the captive going free. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. Why? Because the Son is the Father revealed in the days of his flesh. But he that acknowledges the Son hath the Father also. He said, Let therefore that abide in you which you've heard from the beginning, if that which you've heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Why? Because the Son is the Father revealed in that body of flesh and blood. When we see how important this is to have the true rock, the true revelation, not some mystery that cannot be revealed. This mystery has been received all over the world right now. This faith that was once delivered to the saints is now being revealed. That's right. They were all over the world. Right now in India, Pakistan, Nepal, Philippines, uh, Africa, ministers, preachers, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers are coming into that revelation of Jesus. Very exciting that they're seeing that truth and said, oh, how great a revelation. Well, it's simply by the Holy Ghost. We find here it's that in the second John, in the epistle of John, whosoever transgresses and abideth not in what? That doctrine of Christ, that rock, that rock upon this rock of which the whole church is built, which is that revelation of Christ. Christ is that spirit, always has been that spirit, and always will be that spirit. Abideth not in that doctrine of Christ, hath not God. He that abides in that doctrine of Christ, what is that doctrine? He hath both the Father and the Son. What is that? Well, let's take the Spirit of God. That Spirit of God, we can call it many things. We can call him Father because he is the Father of all spirits, the creator of all. That's Jesus Christ. Colossians 1, 16 and 17, all things created by Jesus Christ, whether it be thrones, principalities, powers, things visible and invisible, all things created by him. He is the Word. The Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Yes, the Father revealed in a body of flesh and blood. Yes, the Holy Ghost revealed, the power of God revealed. If I with the finger of God, Jesus said, cast out devils, know ye the kingdom of God's come nigh unto you. That is the kingdom of God. Uh, that is the Christ revealed. The Father Word, that Holy Ghost, that Holy Spirit, that Holy Ghost there's a power office of that same spirit. Well, it's three different offices, three different functions, but it's still one. One spirit. It doesn't become separate when it's manifest, this invisible spirit manifests in a body of flesh and blood. That is uh, the Son, and the Son and the Father are one and the very self same spirit. I and my Father are one. What? We're one in the self-same spirit. The of God is where this is invisible. The Son of God is that Father revealed in that body of flesh and blood. He is that Word revealed in a body of flesh and blood. He is that Holy Ghost revealed 
in that body of flesh and blood. Therefore, Father, Word, and the Holy Ghost, you've seen me, you've seen the Father. It is a manifestation of God himself, and that's the mystery that is now being received all over the world. And without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the Spirit, preached unto the Gentiles, seen of angels, believed on in the world, received up into glory, 1 Timothy 3.16. Now, true, that is a mystery, but it's now being revealed. That book is open for us to have that understanding. And it is as it is now revealed by his holy apostles and prophets in uh, that Ephesians 3. We find here that Jesus is that spirit. He is that Holy Ghost. He is that Father. He is that word revealed in uh, the days of his flesh. So the Son of God is a manifestation of the Spirit of God in fullness and power. God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. Where it gets confusing to many is that even though Jesus is that Father of glory, even though he is that Word made flesh, in the days of his flesh, there is a law that has separated the Spirit of God, the Father, from his creation here in all mankind, literally, death reigning over all mankind. Therefore, God has to have a man. By one man's disobedience, sin came to the world, and death by sin, therefore by one man shall my servant make many righteous. Who is that servant? Well, the servant is this body of flesh and blood. That's what you see in the of God, that servant. Well, we find in Isaiah 43, 10, Thus saith the Lord, that's that Lord Jehovah God Almighty, and my servant whom I have chosen, this man right here, that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. No, there, no, there's no God before me that was formed. No God before me formed, neither shall be after me. God formed himself a body of flesh and blood. We find that. Isaiah 43, 10 through 14 See now that I, even I am he, beside me there's no other God. I am the Lord, thy God, thy Redeemer. Well, we find that same thing how God did in Philippians 2, 6. Jesus, who being in the form of God, that form is the nature of God's spirit, though not robbery to be of God, he made himself of no reputation. God loved you so much. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That's the only begotten God, the only begotten one, the only begotten son. That's the monogamous theos. That is uh, the only unique, solitary one, God manifest in flesh. Here, power received the love of God because he laid down his life for us, 1 John 3, 16. Well, that is God manifest in the flesh, and he literally took on that body of flesh and blood, being in the form of God, though not raw revealed for God, made himself of no reputation. He laid aside his glory, and literally took upon him the form of a servant, made in the likeness of men, being found in fashion as a man, humbled himself to the death, the death of the cross. Therefore, where God hath highly exalted him, Jesus said, destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it up. He is that spirit. Jesus will literally as a man, by himself taking on that form of a servant. God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. Christ is that spirit. Here's the doctrine of Christ. Christ is that spirit. 1 Peter 1, verse 11. He is that spirit. But he made himself a body of flesh and blood. That's the Christ that should come into the world who is God manifest. Christ is that spirit. Manifest in a body of flesh and blood as, uh, as one of us to redeem us that were under the law. Christ, that doctrine of Christ is Christ is that spirit. That literally suffered as Christ, the man, and then went back to his former glory. Let all the house of Israel know assuredly, after Jesus died on that cross, took that law, the ordinance of that law, nailed it to his cross, and thereby breaking down this middle wall of partition that separated God from all, man, God from all mankind. Literally being glorified with the Father's own self, thereby making in himself one new man. 
What is that? That same Jesus whom you crucified. First Corinthians 15, 45, the last Adam, first Adam made a living soul. The last Adam, this man here, God manifest in flesh, the last Adam made a quickening spirit. That man is quickening, not a spiritual man, a quickening spirit. First Corinthians 15, 45. We find also in Acts 2, 36, let all the house of Israel know surely that same Jesus whom you crucified. God has made him both Lord, that's the Lord Jehovah God Almighty, and Christ. He went back to his former glory. Now Christ is in you, the Holy Ghost in you, the Holy Spirit in you. If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. But if that same Spirit that dwelled in Jesus also dwells in you, there's only one Spirit. Dwells in you, it shall also quicken or make alive, quicken your mortal body. That is the doctrine of Christ. That is the rock upon which the whole church is built. That rock is our salvation. It's the doctrine of Christ. We must know that doctrine of Christ. Therefore, Jesus said to him that overcome will I grant to sit, S-I-T, with me in my throne. Where did you go, Jesus? Well, I made that for you. So we have Christ, the Spirit, who will always be the Spirit. See your time's gone, neighbor. Bless you. And have this revelation of Jesus. Until the next time, this is Brother Dennis Spirit saying, Behold, the real Jesus.